Helen Lock at the Jews. When I was dating, these are the things I look for in a godly man. You want to feel safe. You want to know that he actually cares about your needs and doesn't think that they are too much. You want someone who is a good listener that will be patient with you and listen and hear out all of your thoughts and feelings. Really, you also want someone who is going to ultimately bring you closer to the Lord, where they reveal the best version of you and you reveal the best version of them. Someone who draws you into the heart of God. You also want a man with vision because ladies, if he can't lead himself, how is he ever going to lead you? Now, I dated a lot of guys that had maybe little parts of these traits, but not the full thing. And you want to look for somebody who has your top values, who has your top non-negotiables. Maybe they're not perfect in these things, but they at least exist and they are striving to better these things every single day. Ephesians 4.15 says this, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in very, every at respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ, right? So, of course, there's this per picture of submission and surrendering to Christ. And then, of course, because that person is submitted and surrendered to Christ, there's a maturity that is able to take place, a maturity in the body. Both people are being able to grow together in Christ. Right. So that's a massive thing. You want somebody who's able to grow in Christ. This man is the right man because he's a godly man. Right. I actually saw a comment in this that mentioned that a godly man can also fake it. Well, here's the thing. If he's faking it, um, then it's not to say that he's not a godly man. Okay, I'm not going to go that far to question somebody's salvation, but it's hard to fake it. It's legitimately, if you're looking for the right things and you're real patient in this process, it's hard to fake it um, because that that lie can only go so long, right? And so you have to be willing to pay attention to the evidences of the fruit. You can't fake fruit. Words are not fruit. It's your actions. It's your lifestyle. It's the way that you live. That is something that cannot be disputed. And so being closer, growing closer into God and growing, growing closer into Christ, leading the other person into being closer in Christ definitely comes from fruit being displayed in their life and growing, maturing in Christ uh, together one with another. Okay. And then she also mentioned vision, Proverbs 29, 18. Now I'm not necessarily going to tell you that this text tells us that a person is needing to have vision, but I do think it can be implied. Okay. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction and so ultimately get this for the man to have real vision it has to be rooted in scripture it has to be rooted in a relationship with god because that's where the revelation comes from because any other vision that any that someone chases after and they aren't following after christ this vision is very shaky and, and here's the thing too because this person could have a vision monetary gain jobs positioning dreams and all that kind of stuff man and, and it sounds good but if it's not saturated and covered by God, then this is all standing on sand and not on a solid foundation. And what actually makes the vision that you see in this person make the most sense is if it aligns in yours. So it's not just that the man needs a vision, the woman needs a vision too. How can we even know that we make sense for each other if I don't even know where I'm going? Right. If I don't have a vision and direction for my life, I just get with anybody. Right. And it's our purpose that actually pushes us closer to knowing the right people we need to have in our lives to connect with, to build with as we're journeying along in this life. So safety, vision good listener, closer to the Lord. All those things are beautiful and beautiful traits that I think, ladies, you should look for in a man 1,000%. And fellas, you should also look to apply that to what you see in a woman. And of course, the biggest thing that I would always encourage you to do, right, is sometimes we look for people to have all of that. And I'm not saying that that's the worst thing, but one of the bigger things that I would love for people today to get is that it's nothing wrong with growing with people, even if they don't have it all, even if they don't have all those descriptions, even if they're stronger in some and we weaker in others and among the other descriptions that we will look for and someone to determine if this is somebody that we would consider not only a godly person, but someone that we would invest our time into. It could be very, very possible that you could lead into those spaces. So maybe they don't read their Bibles every day. Maybe they don't. And it doesn't take away from their salvation or their eligibility. It just means that, hey, that's an opportunity for you to lead in that space. Maybe they aren't the dopest at having in-depth conversations or trying to get deeper with conversations. It doesn't mean you have to force them. But if this is something that you can kind of see, okay, no, I'm, I'm liking this. This is a good vibe. I can get with this. And maybe that's something you lead in by asking questions. 
hey, is it possible that we can kind of dive a little bit deeper into some stronger conversation, right? Like being able to lead in those spaces. And I think there's nothing wrong with putting your front foot out there and leading in those spaces. And I think a lot of times what keeps us from it is like this fear of rejection, or maybe they aren't going to reciprocate the energy. And to that, I would challenge you and say that, hey, it's not an indictment on you if that person doesn't respond favorably when you step out in front. Rather, it could just simply mean that that person isn't really developed just yet. They aren't quite ready for that yet. Or there might just mean that they're still working communication and communicative skills to still work on in order to make that as you know dope as we can. And so just be willing to consider those things as you're journeying through. Two people are meant to come together to complete one another. And there are some spaces where you're weak, some spaces where they're weak, but some of your strengths and some of their strengths is what allows the weaknesses to be worked on and developed to come together. And so be willing to just grow with people. You know, as long as they are putting in work and they're practicing it, as long as they're pursuing it, as long as it's active in their life, you will always have something to work with. I promise you. It's just about how much are you willing to work with it? How patient are you willing to move in those spaces? Um, and be sure that you're taking your time and, and moving along in those processes favorably in order to, you know, allow the relationship to become the best that it can be over time. And so those are just a few other thoughts I would add to that. Thank you so much for joining me in this clip. This is from a recent live stream that I have just done. If you want to check that out, click somewhere on the screen and there you can catch the full replay along with so much more content we've got here for you learning how to navigate and grow healthy, happy, whole and biblical relationships. I'll see you over there.